This is a real problem. And I think that the government should stop doing the jargon thing and, and the ideological thing that they're doing and look at actual outcomes, look at whether the situation they've had for three years is working. The problem of drug, short drug shortages is an important matter of public health. Shortages have major consequences on Canadians' health, on the practice of public health professionals, and on the cost of the system, Mr. Speaker. The most important issue here is Canadians' health. Drug shortages threaten patients' health because it delays access to drugs and people have less effective drugs with a more likelihood of, sec of side effects. The government is leaving the protection of Canadians' health up to pharmaceutical companies, which are the only ones who decide when drug shortages will be made public. This bill on mandatory disclosure of drug shortages meets a need to put in place a transitional period to ensure the protection of our citizens' health. It provides that for any interruptions that are foreseeable in terms of uh, production, distribution, or, import, or imports of drugs, the phar pharmaceutical company in question must advise the minister at least six months before the date provided for in a case where a pharmaceutical company should stop producing, distributing, or importing a given drug, it must notify the minister at least 12 months before, uh, rather 12 months in advance. This bill also indicates that any companies that violate the law will be liable to fines. Now, we are talking about a regulatory framework for the disclosure of drug shortages but we don't intend to reinvent the wheel. Mr. Speaker, mandatory reporting of drug shortages exists in the United States, our neighbor to the south, in New Zealand, and in the European Union. So why not here in Canada? In addition, it has been called for by a number of Canadian groups, including the College of Family Physicians of Canada, in a letter written to the Prime Minister in 2011, and the Quebec Order of Pharmacists. I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, even the public servants who work for Health Canada recommended that the minister adopt such a system. The adoption of a mandatory reporting system of drug shortages would have direct benefits on the practice of health professionals. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker this bill has received support from many, many individuals and entities. These include Pharmacy Regul Regulatory Authorities, College of Family Physicians of Canada, or the Pharmacy. The Order of Quebec Pharmacists, which adopted a resolution in support of my bill, the Quebec Association of Anesthesiologists, Land and Labrador Pharmacy Board, Prince Edward Island Pharmacy Board, Association des Pharmacies. The Association of Pharmacists for Health Establishments of Quebec. The Federation of Nurse Union. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta. Donc, Monsieur le so, Mr. Speaker, drug shortages have consequences on the health of Canadian patients. They undermine Canadians' health and complicate the workings of our health system data on this subject are damning. These sh drug shortages significantly affect the health of patients, the work of healthcare professionals, and they also exert enormous pressure on the costs of the healthcare system. Brace yourself for what else this survey revealed. Uh, four respondents indicated that a lack of anesthetics uh, or essential medication led to the death of 
patients following surgery. And this clearly shows that drug shortages can have tragic effects on human lives, and this is why we must act now. Mr. Speaker, I am aware that mandatory disclosure would not uh, fix the problem of drug shortages, but uh, it would help us to better manage patients and it would allow healthcare professionals to have better information so they can better manage the consequences of the drug shortfalls. Uh, the uh, US, the EU, and New Zealand have all adopted mandatory disclosure. This bill is not a revolution. It is simply based on what is being done elsewhere in the world. Uh, the financial penalties included in this bill are based on measures adopted by the U.S. Congress and on the principle that if the law is not respected, there should be consequences. Uh, I rise today to speak to Bill C-523 and to take this opportunity to highlight our government's efforts to address drug shortages in Canada and briefly outline why I believe that this bill is not the right approach for Canadians. Drug shortages are a global problem that our government takes very seriously. Many of us have heard from our constituents about the impact that drug shortages can have on patients and health care providers. Industry launched drugshortages.ca in 2012. Through this site, industry has been working collaboratively and voluntarily to provide public notification of actual and anticipated drug shortages. The information available on this site is critical to helping all elements of the healthcare system adapt to potential supply disruptions before patient care is negatively impacted. Most importantly, this approach is working. This bill seeks to amend the Department of Health Act to require drug suppliers to notify the Minister of Health of any disruption in the supply of drugs and to impose fines for non-compliance. Where Bill C-523 falls short is that it ignores the significant goodwill and positive momentum seen to date to address this important issue. In doing so, this bill prematurely concludes that mandatory notification is possible, enforceable, or would necessarily lead to a reduction in the frequency and duration of these shortages. I don't think this bill can achieve that. This bill also fails to recognize the complexity of the supply chain and the distinct roles and responsibilities of its stakeholders in the event of a shortage. Industry's primary role in the event of a potential or actual drug shortage situation must be more than just providing notification. Rather than focusing attention on all stakeholders and their different but complementary roles, Bill C-523 seeks to expand the role of the federal government. In doing so, this bill attempts to impose additional bureaucracy, burdensome oversight, and needless, unenforceable penalties. This ineffective, big government approach would not reduce drug shortages. It's because of our efforts with all stakeholders that companies are providing advance notice of shortages online, including information about alternative treatments. The lessons that have been learned from both the 2012 report from the Standing Committee on Health and through current multi-stakeholder efforts have been that improved notification is only one component of a comprehensive strategy. We now know that this comprehensive approach to drug shortages requires an integrated focus on prevention, notification and communication, and mitigation and crisis management. While our government will not support Bill C-523, we will continue to monitor this issue very closely and are also open to considering a mandatory approach if needed. Embarking upon such an approach at this time, however, would hinder the progress we've made so far. In closing, Bill C-523 falls short of the strong collaborative approach and action that we've taken on drug shortages, an action that Canadians can expect and deserve from our government. We'll continue to build on the successes that we have seen so far to draw on the strength of our partners and work together to prevent and manage drug shortages in Canada. Thank you.
I will say from the offset uh, that the Liberal Party would be supporting this bill. Uh, we think it's a timely one. Uh, indeed, I, I listened to my uh, honourable colleague, the Parliamentary Secretary, um, use terms like needless. Uh, I don't think the drugs, drugs, this bill that it intends to deal in a real way with drug shortages is needless at all, and I'll tell you why later on. I think uh, the, the parliamentary secretary talk about bureaucratic big government. I don't think this is bureaucratic and big government. In fact, it is bureaucracy that is standing in the way of the kind of processes we need to get drugs out there in the community as soon as possible. And Sandoz is not um, something that we should be referring to in any positive light because it was Sandoz. And the, and the cost to communities, especially intravenous, um, in the hospitals, intravenous anesthetics, was a huge problem for everybody. And it did, did catapult this problem onto the front pages of the newspapers and onto center stage. But this is not something new. This began the College of Pharmacists and the Canadian Pharmacists Association identified this problem in 2010, saying that about 90% of pharmacists had a difficult time filling prescriptions because they couldn't find the, the drugs that they needed. Uh, at that time, about 58% of physicians had said that they actually couldn't find the drugs that they needed and they had to look for substitutions. Now, that was in 2010. We know that a lot of these shortages from generic companies and many of the drugs that we're talking about are old, tried and true drugs that have been in the pharmacopoeia for physicians and for patients and pharmacists for the last 30 years. And now they're no longer being made in many instances because they're not profitable and because you can't find the raw materials, etc. But, but it is not a needless problem or needless intervention that the parliamentary secretary referred to, Mr. Speaker. It is very needful. And here is what's happened. Since 2010, when pharmacists and doctors identify this problem, in 2012, since the government has taken the steps that she talked about, in fact, in 2012, the situation has worsened. Now, 95% of pharmacists say that they have trouble trying to get the drugs that are prescribed. And 68, an increase from 52% of physicians are now saying this is a problem for them in treating their patients. And it's shown over three years that the system of voluntary reporting hasn't worked. It's time to go into a mandatory system. It's time to identify beforehand. It's time to look at what the United States has been successfully doing. So this is an issue of patient care. The government does not have to continue with the voluntary measures that they have been doing, that have been shown not to work. I mean, we're talking about evidence here. If you had it for three years and it's making things worse, then fix it, for crying out loud. What's the big problem? I don't believe that if in the United States they are able to get industry to work with government and to mandate certain things uh, without industry getting mad at them, the government has taken a strong step in the United States. They obviously give a hoot about their patients and about what happens to, to, to the United States citizens. The problem here is that we have to get on top of this. We have to be proactive about it. We have to mandate getting it out there. Many drugs, and, and I can go down an extensive list of drugs right now that have been in short supply that were never <coughs> flagged on time. So timeliness is an issue, Mr. Speaker. Not simply mandating reporting, but timeliness. The ability, the thing about timeliness is it gives a doctor and a pharmacist the ability to find a new and alternative drug. The ability to search around and see if they can find that drug to tide the patient over while they're trying them on a new drug. This is an essential component of patient care. This is important for patients. For those of you who have families who are ill, especially with chronic diseases. For those of you who have families who have acute diseases and cannot find immediate care for yourselves, this is a real problem. And I think that the government should stop doing the jargon thing and, and the ideological thing that they're doing and look at actual outcomes, look at whether the situation they've had for three years is working, and move forward to have a better system to emulate, it's not, it's not a bad thing to emulate good practices, emulate the practice in the United States Food and Drug Administration and what Mr. Obama has done, and let us take care of Canadian patients. This is what we are intending to do. This is why this bill has come forward, and this is why we as Liberals who flagged it and, and came up with similar ideas at the beginning will support this bill. It's a good bill, it's a solid bill, and it will help patients in the long run. Thank you very much.